Oh, this mic, nostressmic.com. Uh, I want to talk about uh, doing the impossible. Uh, right now, I'm over in Missouri, and uh, I'm on the road, running around, uh, seeing old friends, uh, trying to get caught up on what's going on in the world around me. This is a world that I'm in, so I want to catch up and see what's going on. But uh, one of the discoveries that I made when I'm talking to my friends is is something that I've known, and uh, I really didn't know how to say it. And what it is is doing the impossible. I've mentioned that some of my videos where I talk about uh, that I do a lot of things that many people find impossible. And that's what we were talking, that's what they were talking about. Well, it's impossible, you're doing this and you're doing that, it's impossible. And it made me think, and yes, uh, years ago, before I had experience, I would say a lot of the stuff that I do now is impossible. Even now on a three-man militia, uh, people will say, well, that's impossible, you know, and, and see, that's because of their inexperience. And uh, my friends that I'm over here seeing, they know that I kind of specialize in impossible. That's kind of like a, a problem solver. He does the impossible. Uh, if, if it's a problem and you can't handle it and a problem solver can, that means he just did the impossible. So, um, when you look and understand impossible and really get down to it, you can see it's that impossibility that drives us uh, as a uh, say it, a well-rounded human uh, knows nothing is impossible. To them, there are certain things that are impossible. Even I have some certain, certain things that are impossible. But, and how did I find out they're impossible? More than likely, I've thrown myself into the situation. And if I wasn't able to get this thing done, it falls under, it is an impossible thing for me. And, but I don't look at things, oh, that is impossible until after I got my hands dirty, after I've gotten involved in it, after I've, I've really uh, got the feeling, then I can tell you if it was impossible or not. I mentioned uh, my time in Vietnam. I did stuff that I even now when I think about it, it's impossible how you can live through such uh, type of conditions and circumstances and situations. But, and not everybody does. So, uh, it's just one of these things, sometimes it's, it's the luck of the roll, uh, the, the faith you have in God, the faith you have in yourself. There's a lot of things that determine uh, when and if something is impossible. It might be impossible now, but under the right conditions, it turns into a possibility. You, you know you're not strong enough to lift up the side of a car, but you've heard stories of people where you know somebody is, uh, is underneath the car and they're able to pick that car up enough where they can pull the person out. Uh, so it just, and yeah, you can say, well, that's the adrenaline and stuff. And a lot of the stuff is adrenaline. It's getting you through impossible situation. Uh, I mentioned I, I was uh, swimming offshore in Guatemala and the tow pulled me out to the ocean. And um, I, I did everything to keep from panicking. I knew I was being drawn out. And I knew I was going to drown. Uh, but like I say, I 
was able to convince myself to keep going and the adrenaline is what kept me going and kept so I was able to get out of it. So there's some things that'll, that'll do like that, but not everything has to be a life-threatening event uh, to make it uh, a, a difficult situation impossible and you're still able to get through it. And uh, that's one of the things they, they were saying that they don't they don't like to hear people talk foreign languages around them because they think somebody's going to talk talk about it. And like for me, I know people are talking about me. <laughs> you know, because I mean, I stand out, so I know they're talking about me. I don't care what they're going to say. And uh, I mean, it's no big deal. I mean, uh, like I say, I haven't done nothing. They don't know me good enough to say any bad things about me, so it's no big deal. So, but. The thing is, I'm able to uh, not only function in a condition where I can't communicate, that's where a lot, a lot of people don't understand how I can go to places and don't communicate. And I even have people tell me, well, you know, it's not, it's not even nice to go to a place that you, don't, you can't even say anything. But then they don't realize I go to so many different places, I'd be spending all my time learning the language, I'd never get to go anywhere. So, I mean, I just emerge myself into this situation. And whatever, I don't know the rules, I don't know how things work, I make it happen. And um, whatever I need to get done, I make it happen. And it's all done one step at a time. And now we're to the point, if you notice, um, I never go to... Uh, Beaches. I never go to uh, what do you call it? Uh, islands and stuff like that. I think only uh, only two islands I think I've been to is uh, Aruba and um, Cuba. And I say I didn't really much care for either one of them. And uh, and I say beaches. I don't. I've been to a lot of beaches. And beaches aren't something I look for. A lot of it, I don't even like telling you this, but uh, the main reason is they have food allergies. And the food allergies uh, stem around seafood. And I don't like people being picky about what they eat. Most people are picky about what they eat because they are picky on what they eat. The only thing that makes me picky about what I eat is I don't want to eat anything that's going to poison me, that's going to kill me. Uh, I don't do doctors, so when I get sick, I got big problems. Now, uh, I, I would go to a doctor if it was something like that. Uh, as I say, it's no big deal. Just take some kind of medicine and you can take care of it. That's no, no big deal. It's not a lifetime medicine, it's just a one-time thing. But, uh, like I say, I still don't like getting around doctors or being around medical facilities, stuff like that, because like I say there's nothing healthy about it. Um, like I say, you, you go to a, a hospital in particular, you go to the hospital when you're on, on the verge of death. Uh, I mean, when I was a kid, I never saw a hospital until I was ready to die. <laughs> And um, I've kind of continued that same attitude. Uh, you seldom see me in a hospital unless I have something really drastic has happened to me. And uh, but but when you have your mind open and you're able to understand that if other people can do it, you can do it. Uh, they, I mean, you're, yes, they've been born and raised under these uh, conditions and stuff, but you can still do it. It may seem impossible, but it, you can do it. And a lot of times, when you are put into impossible situations, and there's no way out of it, other than doing the impossible, you will do the impossible. And you'll do it on little things, or you'll do it on big things. It just doesn't make any difference. Uh, now, mainly as I'm older, I look at things and I see things that are impossible 
and I'll kind of sit back and kind of baby it, uh, hoping it will straighten itself out so I don't have to get involved in an impossible situation. And, uh, and that, that could be legal problems, uh, that could be emotional problems, uh, financial problems, it's less likely because as you get older, you're smart enough. If you can't afford something, you don't do it. So uh, you don't have any financial problems. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's why when I help people, and they're in an impossible situation, when I help them, normally I help them by giving them support, uh, emotional support, mostly. Uh, or like I say, I'll be standing behind them when they're getting something done uh, to let them know that I'm there with them. And uh, that, I, I, that is a big thing. I know I'm a big thing about that. If I know somebody's standing behind me, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take almost anything. So, uh, uh, but anyway, so doing the impossible is something you could do. And doing the impossible is one of these things you can prepare for. We prepare all the time. It's what we do. And people watch my videos. That's what we do. We prepare. And preparing to do the impossible is the same thing. You can do the impossible without having all of the stuff that you need to do the impossible. Uh, the more, If you have all the stuff you need to do the impossible, then more than likely it really wasn't impossible. It's just you just, just didn't have the knowledge. You got the equipment, you just have to learn how to use it. And, but what really gets interesting is when you're getting yourself in situations and you don't have what you need and you still have to get through this impossible situation. And that's the kind of stuff I've noticed I've been doing a lot of. And I think going to uh, Asia has been probably in the way of uh, getting myself into situations has been like that. Now, so far, I haven't had anything in physical uh, problems. Like, say, Central America has probably been about the most that I've gotten myself into physical situations, other than the convenience store where I had to shoot the guy. But um, it's, uh, so far, in Asia, nothing physical. And like I say, I'm, I'm pushing myself. I'm going to different places, doing different things. Uh, and like I say, so you will see me going more to uh, stretching, stretching out and pushing my This is Mike. No stress, Mike. Dot com.